it's time for our spotlight on fixed income investing. And for that, we welcome in David Botsets with us, Head of Innovation and Stewardship at Schwab Asset Management. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. So, you know, we, we know what people have been loving. They've been loving money market funds, short-term bonds. Um, I know you've seen all of that. Tell me some of the trends or some of the conversations you're having January, February of 2024. Sure, I, I think as we kind of feel like we've reached the peak with fixed income rates where they're at today, people are starting to think about what comes next. Mm -hmm. And we're getting the Fed minutes later yes. today, as you mentioned maybe a preview or better understanding of when the Fed may move to cut rates, as many people are predicting. So people are starting to think, well, if I'm in short-term bonds, I'm in ultra-short bonds, where do I go from here? Do I start to tailor that out to more intermediate duration if interest rates do, in fact, intend to come down? And you're seeing that, in fact, right? You're already seeing some inflows into intermediate bonds. That, Is that's that exactly right. right. What kind at, of timing are we talking? I'm sorry, David. Yeah. And it, I just am curious when we're talking about short term versus intermediate, what kind of time frame are we talking about? Sure. Duration? So we look at kind of three buckets. We have the ultra short bond, which is, tends to be a duration less than one year. Mm -hmm. We're looking at the short term tends to be that one to five year and intermediate in the five to 10 year space. Right. So you're seeing, um, and in droves, I mean, how are we starting to see the moves? Yeah, you know, we're in January. So we took a look at January flows of this year. Mm -hmm. um, ultra short bond fund ETFs, this is the first month of outflows that they've had in some time. They were one of the leading asset gatherers for fixed yeah. income ETFs in 2023. What about, I mean, how, did, how are people talking about equities? Because we're going to have I mean, there's still talk of one more hike, but I'll put that aside. The idea is that we're going to have decreasing rates. We're going to have rate cuts. Um, you know, when you talk about a portfolio, and we'll talk about someone going into retirement versus some of the millennial trends that you're seeing. Um, but when it comes to equities and bonds and having a diversified portfolio, where do we stand on that? Yeah, I think we're still seeing a very well diversified portfolio amongst many investors. Right. But they're thinking about how do I how do I really position the equity portion of my portfolio? Uh, we talked about the Magnificent Seven and what the run up's been there. So we're looking at the mm -hmm. diversification that they have. Sure. Do, do I have my right weights between large cap and small cap? Small cap is tended to underperform. So thinking about those allocations in their equity portion. Right. And um, within your notes, there was less risk, more risk. If someone was interested, uh, were interested, for example, they're going into retirement, maybe they're looking or maybe they just have some time and don't have that same risk appetite. Yes. What do you say to those folks who have less risk appetite but want to be invested? Well, quite frankly, now is a good time because of where interest rates are at. Fixed income, again, is providing income in your portfolio. Mm -hmm. And we saw many investors, especially those that are getting later in their, in their age, looking for income, were going to equities for income. Right, that introduced additional risk in their portfolio. Sure. Right now, they can get into the fixed income space, things like the intermediate space um, of the fixed income, where you, in the corporate space you can get 70 to 100 basis points more yield than you're getting in treasuries. So there was the Schwab 2023 ETF and Beyond study, and very interesting findings when it came to the millennials. Tell mm -hmm. us about that. Well, there are a couple of things that weren't surprising. Number one, wasn't surprising to hear that millennials tend to have more use of ETFs in their portfolio and a propensity to use them more going forward. What was surprising was the utilization of fixed income. That millennial cohort indicated they were investing more in fixed income than the older generations were. That's interesting. Um, you know, and people went to ETFs as they were building wealth, right? That's right. Um, are the millennials building wealth? Well, I, I think, I, I hope that they are. Yeah. And, it, and it indicates that they are. Right. What we've really kind of try to look through the holdings to, to surmise why are they investing more in fixed income? Mm -hmm. and, and while we don't have exact data to tell us this, the things that we do here, that many of them have gone through the global, great financial crisis. They've seen their parents struggle. So they tend to be a little bit more conservative with their allocations than what the older generation has been. They also yeah. realize they've got longer to save. Right. If I'm a millennial, I'm, I'm not looking at five to 10 years to save. If I start early, I can invest for the next 30, 40 years. Yeah, tell me a little bit. You said uh, maybe you want to consider munis for um, diversification uh, versus corporate bonds. I mean, my dad used to talk about munis all the time, right? <laughs> so tell us a little bit about what you're seeing and some trends there and why those might work for folks. Yeah, I think there are two things. One, again, the yield, very attractive in the municipal space, especially depending on what state you're in, the mm -hmm. taxable equivalent yield when you account for the, the, the tax benefit from the state. 
The second is diversification. You know, when you think about traditional corporate bonds, you see a high overlap of issuers of corporate bonds to what you have in the equity portion of your portfolio. Whereas in the municipal space, mm -hmm. you see different issuers. So it can really help to, to buffet your portfolio or diversify your portfolio a little bit more from an issuer specific standpoint. Yeah, and SCHI yes. um, is one of the bond funds that's been seeing some inflow, is that yes, right? Yes, that's right. That's our five to, five to 10 year corporate bond ETF. 2023, we took in over $5 billion in net new flows into that fund. It's great to see you, David. Thank you so much, David Botset. Great to see you of Schwab Asset Management.